Welcome everybody to today's webinar. It is November the 3rd on a Friday and I am going to show you how I'm running my midterm rental business. At the end of the day, you know, you want to focus your time on doing the things that, you know, bring you joy, the things that are and, and make your life easier by not having to do the tedious things um, like scheduling cleaners and doing rental agreements. If everything was automated, how much would that simplify your midterm rental business? And people are wondering like, when do I start using a PMS system? The truth is I wish I started sooner because I would have had um, way more time to set things up properly. Because once you get busier, then you're like, then there's so much more to set up. But if you set it up right from the get-go, then it becomes a lot easier for you to scale. So the lesson here is to build the business that you want instead of building the business that you have for now. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to go through some of the benefits of why I like Onores. And before you know, you wonder like, what about guesty or what about hospitable and all that stuff? I actually was on hospitable prior to being on Onores. I really did like Hospitable for many reasons. It's very user-friendly, very simple to use, and it's great for short-term rentals. But for mid-term rentals, we have a little bit more risk that we have to worry about, especially rental agreements, which is where owner res was a game changer for me. Because I interviewed Guesty, I interviewed Hospitable, I looked at owner res, and I think there was one more, which I can't think of at the top of my head. And at the end of the day, owner res was like, by far more superior, even though it is a total beast to set up, especially if you have a lot of properties. But I think that <clears throat> once you spend the time to, to set everything up, it's completely worth it. So I'm going to share my screen. So owner res is built for short-term rentals. No doubt about that. But I've been having meetings with owner res directly with their uh, development team to see if we can make enhancements for the midterm space. I let them know that, you know, we have a big Facebook group. You know, I have my own properties that are midterm rentals. Midterm rentals are hot. A lot of people are entering this market and you need to learn how to de-risk your business. So let's talk about some of the benefits. Channel management. When you have API connection with big uh, OTAs like Airbnb and Verbo, there's always that risk of getting double bookings if you're not API connected. With owner res, you're API connected, your calendar sync in real time. That way, when you have one booking, it automatically blocks the other calendar and vice versa. So there's zero chance of double bookings. Um, so you get to manage you know, that, including booking.com. Google Vacations is coming on board. Uh, so I really like that benefit. There's also instant update of rates, rules, availability, and content to all channels. So you manage everything from one spot and it populates into the systems that it needs to go to. Then there's direct booking. So a lot of people are only doing Airbnb or only doing Verbo. And what do you do if you get a direct booking? Especially in midterm rentals, you may have that insurance company that wants to come on board and they want to book directly with you, but they won't use Airbnb or Verbo either. So you need to find a way to be able to take that booking through your system and go through all the rental agreements and whatnot. And then um, messaging. It's a unified inbox for all your emails. You can enable SMS, which I have not done yet. So I won't be going through that. But all my templates go through owner res and populates into Airbnb. And I set up templates and triggers that make that happen. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, there's direct messaging with the guests through owner res as well. So it makes it a lot simpler. Websites. If for those of you that are looking for a direct booking website, you can actually just turn on a button and you will automatically have a website and you can upload your logos, do your own colors and add your own you know, style to it. And it's very, very simple to use. Accounting, if you have multiple properties, it can get messy. So you might wanna be able to record um, you know, expenses or cleaning fees or damage deposits and whatnot. So you wanna use the accounting feature as additional dollars for it, but I think it's worth it if you integrate with QuickBooks. Payment processing, I'm integrated with Stripe. So that way I can collect a security deposit. I'm gonna show you all this stuff today. All right, and then payment processing, Stripe, I use that. I use that because I can hold a deposit directly from the guest. I avoid air cover altogether by holding a security deposit. And I'll show you how I did that um, a couple of weeks ago. And then property management, 
you can manage all your properties from one place and even have a uh, rental, uh, what do you call it? Rental guardian for security damage deposits, <laughs> security damage insurance. Integrations, of course, I talked about API integrations with Airbnb, Booking.com, and Verbo, but you also have integrations with Rental Guardian, with Stripe, with Remote Lock, with uh, Turno. You can even use Breezeway, which I'm not using. You can do integration with Price Labs. There's so many different things. There's customer relationship management. This is my favorite part. I get to collect all the guest information. And then, of course, there's reporting. I haven't been so strong on the reporting side, so I'm not going to show you too much about it. But there is tons of resources available for you to go and check owner res's um, information to figure out the reporting side. And then rental agreements. This is the most important part. The game changer is to electronically e-sign rental agreements. You can either use a template that comes with it or you can um, create your own. So we've had an attorney, an eviction attorney, create our rental agreement that has you know, correct language that we wanted for the midterm rental space. And you can do that as well. So here's owner res and you can see my properties, select them all. So I have 12 properties in here and some of the, most of them are midterm rentals and some of them are uh, short-term rentals and you can choose the way you see them. You can do it by ribbon. Okay. So these are, this one we just launched yesterday. We have our first booking this weekend. You know, this one's a short-term rental on a dry lake. So the fact that I actually got a booking, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about. This one's also a lake property. So it's a short-term rental, but the rest of them are midterm rentals. So you can see, um, you know, your how you've been doing the whole year just by looking at your whole calendar. And then you can also choose to look at it by month. And I can select all the properties. You can see it that way. You can do it by year. You can do current and you can also do it by list. Okay. So there's all these different ways you could look at it. Now, if you want to set up your first property, you'll go into properties and you're going to add property and you're going to add it by Airbnb. So I don't have a listing. I just added one yesterday. I wish I saved it for the demo, but you're going to go to Airbnb and you're going to add the link there. So on Airbnb, so let's go to this one, for instance. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick up your link by hitting preview listing. And then you're going to copy everything from the question mark and before that. Okay. And then you're going to go back to here and you're going to add that here. And then you're going to create new property. So you add your URL and then you create new property. So I had already created one yesterday. So you, by the way, the prerequisite here is you've already set up your Airbnb listing. So do that first and then add it. And then you're going to start going through setting it up. So after you do that step, you need to go to settings and then API integration. Then you have to connect your channel. So you're going to connect it to Airbnb and it's going to ask you to map your property. So it's going to add a new property in here. So for this instance, um, we added this new property yesterday and you're going to, you're going to map it. So it's going to have a drop down, and you're going to map it and it's going to sync everything together. So it takes your Airbnb listing and it's going to create an owner res listing and then you have to combine them together. So it knows which property goes with which listing. So then after that, you're going to go into your property and you're going to select the property that you just added. And this is a really important step. You're going to have to go one by one from the left. You're going to change and then you're going to name your property. So we, we called it the South Austin getaway. If you have a property phone line, you could do it there. If you have a direct booking link, you put it there. This calculation override, you would only override it if it's something that you've is different from Airbnb. I don't know why anybody would do that differently. So then the next step, if you make any changes and save, then you go to the calendars next. You don't need to do this if you're API connected. So we're gonna skip that because we're gonna assume that back here, we did the API connection. Again, the API connection, if you're not familiar, creates the direct response between the systems so that they're always integrated and intertwined. And there will not be any double bookings. Everything is real time. And then there's rules. So under rules, you're gonna say which legal agreement will be chosen. And I'll show you that in a minute because there's different legal agreements. So for me, 
I have a legal agreement for short-term rentals. I have a legal agreement for travel nurses. I have a legal agreement for midterm rentals. But what's the difference between travel nurses and midterm rentals? Travel nurses, I have a more lenient cancellation policy. Whereas with a regular midterm rental, I have a more strict cancellation policy. But it's really up to you how you decide to run that. So um, the legal agreement, I'll show you how to choose that. Payment methods, I accept Venmo, I accept Zelle, I accept credit cards. Then the cancellation policy you can choose. So there's various ones you can choose. Mine is 100% uh, cancellation if it occurs 60 days before arrival. And then the first, the payment is 100% required up front. You can split that if you want to. It depends on how you want, want to run your business. So <clears throat> my biggest complaint to owner as team was that we can only do two payments. We can only set up for the guest to make two payments, which may make sense in a short-term rental because they're just booking for a vacation. But for a midterm rental, they may want to pay on a monthly basis. So I've put in the request for them to pay on the first of every month and, and have a tool to prorate. For now, this is what I have. You could also choose the security deposit. I'm gonna skip over this because I just use the system standard. Security deposit on my midterm rentals, I have at least a thousand dollar security deposit. And the reason why I can do it so low is because I trust rental guardian will reimburse me for damages. And then you can set up the default dates of check-in and check-out time. And then the size restrictions. And then for me, I have a pet policy of breed restrictions and more pets are allowed on a case-by-case -case basis. So this is a large property. I said maximum of 10 adults allowed or maximum of eight children, as that, which means that there's at least two adults and then a maximum of two pets allowed. And then <clears throat> you can restrict the number of nights. So mine is between 30 and 365 days allowed. They have to book at least one day prior to arrival and they can book up to 365 days ahead in the future. Vivian, this? I'm sorry. Can I interrupt real quick? Are yes. these pr like preset options or are you able to like customize these how you, you want to customize them? everything? So you can okay. hit the change button and you can change it to however you want to do it. Okay. So it's not just preset options. You're able to put in like what you want it specifically. Yeah. You can awesome. set it up. I like to open up my calendar 365 days. I know that sounds crazy for a lot of you because you're like, well, what if I get a booking for next November? You're going to use Price Labs to control that. But by opening up your calendar, you will do really well in midterm rentals because someone might be trying to book for nine months. And if your calendar is only open for three months, they will never see your property. But you can control how much they pay and how many nights they book if you use Price Labs on top. Okay, so that's the rule set. Third party alerts <clears throat> for us. You know, I like to have my ops manager and my ops assistant, whenever they get, when, whenever we get a booking, they get alert. Then the accommodations, this is where you set up all of your spaces in the home. So you need, you might want to select a private room, shared room or entire home. I do entire homes only. I put, you know, descriptions of what the vehicle situate or the parking situations like, um, the dining area seats, seven people. It's a vacation rental. I don't have any of these other services. So like, I don't click any of those off. And then if you have a single family home or single level home or step-free access or disabled parking spot, for sure, you can add those things too. Okay, so that's basic uh, accommodations. Amenities. Here's where you set up your basic information. This is uh, deeper than what Airbnb wants, but it's good because you're setting up what the home is supposed to be. So this is a house with no elevator. Oh, this is cool. It says like owner res, you're defining as a house. On verbal, you're defining it as a house. TripAdvisor, it's a house. Airbnb, it's a house. If there's an elevator, click that button. And we do have one property that's an elevator. I set a primary renter age of 25. And then you can set up, um, you know, children are welcome, no smoking, whether events are allowed. So you just go through these one by one. If you have cameras, definitely make sure that you have that checked off and <clears throat> you can be description, be descriptive on all of these if you want to. I chose not to because it's a lot of work. And honestly, I don't even know where this information goes. 
So I haven't done that. You might want to set up your uh, internet speed and then, you know, just fill in the blanks as you go along. So if you have a fireplace, central air, towers are provided because, you know, on the East Coast, I know that a lot of properties, um, they don't even provide linens, which I th find very strange. You have to bring your own. But for our properties, we provide everything. You just show up with your uh, luggage and you're all set. Okay, so you go through that one by one. The next thing is channel rules. I don't do anything here. I just say that everything is API settings. So you can just skip that altogether. The description, this is the interesting part because owner res has to map between the different field settings in whether it's booking.com, Verbo, Airbnb, and whatnot. So you're going to see a lot here. If you hit the change button, you're going to see all these icons. This is going to say where that listing exists in the original website. So for instance, uh, you can see that the description here is also applies to Airbnb and Verbo and all these other little different widgets. So whatever I put here will show up on Onares website, will show up on Airbnb, will show up on Verbo, et cetera. And then this description part, you'll notice that Airbnb is not on here. So you'll know, like once you're on owner res, you don't need to update Airbnb description anymore. You do it all on here and you can copy and paste it into the various sections. That way it updates those other OTAs as well. So for instance, this, this one here, it's only on Verbo, but this one's Airbnb because they're just mapped differently. So I just copy and paste one of these into the second one. That way the Verbo description also goes into the Airbnb description. <laughs> and then, you know, the about you, there's no such thing on Airbnb. So it only maps to these places. So you can skip it if you're not on Verbo. Why this property, that is a thing as a field in Verbo. So you can skip that if you're not on Verbo. And then the accommodation and you know, benefits. I'm primarily listed on my own websites as well as Airbnb. So I just skip the unique benefits. Guest interaction. I say that all 30 day stay guests will get a welcome tour and a tour guide unless declined by the client. And then guest access, you know, fill these in. And the entire home is for you to enjoy. Backyard is fully fenced and private. One clo closet is locked and reserved for supplies. And then here's where you put the meat of your, um, of your listing. We can put the space information in the features description. So there's plenty of characters that you can put on here. So feel free to go crazy. I have a chat a GPT training in my YouTube channel, and you can also find that in the midterm rental wealth group. So uh, feel free to use that. I like to use chat GPT. It saves me so much time. And for those of you that are pet friendly, check your pet policy to see whether or not you have any breed restrictions. This is where I put it in the features description. I say that I have breed restrictions for Rottweilers, Pitbulls, uh, Staffordshire Terriers, Doberman Pinchers, Akitas, Alaskan Malamute, Siberian Huskies, any wolf breeds, Chow Chows, Great Danes, Presna Canarios, and Mastiffs. I heard that some restrictions are on Chihuahuas. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that, but they seem like they're pretty... Uh, harmless, but allegedly they're one of the most complained animals. I think they just bark a lot. Oh, is that what it is? They're like yippee. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> and then very, very important. If you are on API, if you are an owner res, I always say that guests will fill out a renter's agreement and upload ID to confirm the reservations and pay a $1,000 security deposit. Because if you don't include that, the guests will be like, well, I'm." Uh, they'll complain. <clears throat> I've had a few people complain about the security deposit. They're like, well, you're not allowed to collect money outside of Airbnb. Well, actually, you are. And it says that right here, security deposits. And I'm going to post this in your link or in the chat section. That way you guys have it. Save that to your phone if you decide to proceed with owner res. This one says that hosts aren't allowed to charge guests a security deposit through our resolution center or, or outside the Airbnb platform. 
Instead, we inform guests at the time of booking that their payment method may be charged if they cause damage during a stay. If anyone's ever dealt with air cover, you may or may not get your money back. I've done it twice and I haven't got my money back. That's when I decided to go on owner res because I don't want the hassle to chase a payment through the air cover and ask the guest if I can get money back for the pillow they stole or the sheets they damaged or the barbecue they ruined or whatever it is. They're Vivian, in. is that the uh, the rental guardian you mentioned that's through owner res? Yes. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So the important thing is it says here, there is one exception. Hosts who manage their Airbnb listings through API connected software can set a security deposit using our offline fee features. If host has done this, the deposit requirements will be clearly communicated during the book booking process. Okay. To me, that's a game changer. And then location description, you might want to do, you know, what you're close to and then getting there and then getting around, et cetera. So you can save and close that. And the next thing you go to, like, again, you want to go one by one left to right or up to, up to down because you'll go crazy going through everything, going back and forth. So go through them one, one by one guest instructions. So here I have guest instructions. We haven't set that up yet. So guests will receive a dynamic lock code or a custom a custom lock code code. That is the last four digits of the registered guests phone number. And then the directions will be use Google Maps for best results. And then this is the Wi-Fi network and then the password. Any internet info you want to include, maybe if you need to plug in directly to the ethernet, you can find the modem in this space. And then the house manual, we haven't done that yet. So we'll need to, we'll need to do that and save. Next, you'll have the health and safety. So I just fill in the blanks here, you know, carbon monoxide detector, fire extinguisher, smoke detector, all that kind of stuff. Uh, medical emergency, fire emergency, and police, dial 911. Don't contact the host. I don't know how to help you. <laughs> okay, location. Um, you'll need to set up the longitude and latitude here. And then, um, you know, because this is in the suburbs, we recommend a car. There's no special views. And then attraction. So if you have a place that's a lake house, for instance, you might want to include that information, whether there's beach access, maybe you live in a master plan community and there's access to a community pool. This is where you would do that. Okay. And then photos, <clears throat> all your photos get published in here. So they take them from Airbnb and then you put them here. The important thing about photos, and I talk about this in my free training session as well, is be super descriptive in all of your captions. So you can put your captions here and they will automatically translate into Verbo and Airbnb. And then you have to assign the room. I'll go to, I'll go back to that in a minute. So you, you can do that. And then you, if you want to rearrange your photos, you just click and drag them. Okay. So always organize your photos to the first five pictures are your best five. So if you, if I were to hit the cancel, I think the, I think my first five photos are killer. They do a really great representation of the photo. And that's important because when someone's scrolling through and looking at your property at Airbnb, the way the page is dis displayed when on a desktop is the first five pictures show up. Okay. Vivian, can I ask a question about that? Sure. Because that's something I hate so much about Airbnb is like the organization of the photos, right? Like they do the one big picture and then the two underneath it, one big okay. picture, two, blah, blah, blah. Do you find that this kind of gets screwed up in that? Like I always try to put my picture, I'm only on Airbnb right now for my short-term rental, but um, I like, you know, rearrange my pictures and then check to make sure that they make sense in the flow. And then I rearrange and check. Yeah. Do you find that this sometimes like screws that up because it's not specific for Airbnb? No, it doesn't screw it up at all. So if I go into my listing. Like I'm starting to find, I basically need one big picture and then two supporting pictures of like the living room, one big picture of the bedroom, two supporting pictures of the bedroom sort of thing. So let's, let's look at, um, 
Let's look at this property here. It doesn't screw it up because like literally your first five pictures. But like if you click on show all photos. Uh, mm -hmm. So see how it's like a big picture and then there's two little pictures underneath. Yeah. And then well, big yeah. picture. I'm not so worried about them clicking into it. I think that them clicking into it is secondary. But okay. Bring their first attention right here is the most important. Right. Okay. So having your first five best pictures here is like super important. Right. So I make sure I organize my best five pictures in, in and, the first. in the first And then one. the rest doesn't really matter what order yeah. or flow. And, okay. Right. And then, and then, so after you finish doing the pictures, you want to capture every photo. And then you go into rooms and then you have to program owner res to know what rooms you have. So you have a master bedroom, you have a secondary bedroom, you have a third bedroom, fourth bedroom, fifth bedroom. You have to say how many full baths you have, how many, you know, garage, laundry room, all that stuff. So this has got laundry room, living room, dining room, garage, game room. So you have to tell it what rooms you have. And then you go back into photos and then you change. And then now you can assign and then now you can assign the room here. So this one is the living room, right? So we can assign living room here and then save. And then you can assign the front of the house. Let's see if, if she set that up. Um, she did not set that up. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna change. We're going to add a space, I think it is. Bathroom, other rooms. Okay, so other rooms we're gonna add. Oops. I think it's laundry room, living room, dining room, garage, game room. Okay, we're gonna do exterior front and then exterior back. And then we're gonna ca call this um, front yard. And then we're gonna call this backyard, okay? and it's private, it's private. Oh, for some reason, which I don't know why, when you're doing this, it's automatically for some reason gonna choose shared. So make sure you consci consciously choose private on everything. Okay, so now I've set the exterior front, exterior back, and then save. And then I'm gonna go back to the photos and now I can tag this. And I can choose that as the exterior front and save. Okay, and then this one, you can choose the, ex the uh, primary, save, and so forth, okay? And then finally, if you're doing any um, property management, you can set the commission rates for that property there. And that's it for setting it up. And then all this stuff, gets API connected, right? So if you go to, that was Austin's property, and you're gonna see that we just made changes seconds ago, but it was only synced 52 minutes ago. So I can force a sync by triggering a full sync right now. Because otherwise it might take time to sync. So like this one, for instance, it synced six hours ago. Maybe I don't want to wait six hours. Maybe because I have a pet policy and I want to make sure that, you know, if I'm if I've changed my pricing for pets, that it sinks right away. So let's talk about that for a minute. I want to go into your settings and under under surcharges. Surcharges. You have like after you set up your Airbnb listing you have to make sure your surcharges are set up. That includes, you know, different kinds of cleaning fees, right? So let's do um, cleaning fee. So for this particular property, you might have $150 as a cleaning fee for every two bedroom, two bath. So you wanna set that up to automatically apply to every booking. I don't know if you guys saw like a week and a half ago, people were saying they were having bookings coming through with no cleaning fee from Airbnb. Did anybody see that? That happened to me. Did not impact. This did not impact owner res clients. Thank goodness. 
because I think when it was doing the system check in the background, it said, okay, well, we have a, a surcharge. So, cause I kept checking my listings and I kept getting bookings coming in and I was looking for a missing cleaning fee. And then I found out on the owner res uh, Facebook group that API connected hosts were not impacted. So you can, you can set up your cleaning fees to be, you know, on whatever properties you want to. And then you can also set up um, other surcharges like pets. So I have a pet fee for midterm rentals, a $300 pet fee, or if you're doing a short-term rental pet fee, it might just be 50 bucks. So you can set it up as a rule that says for every pet above zero up to the property maximum, which you will set up in your Airbnb. And you can say it only, um, only for particular properties. There's so many ways you can customize this, which is so great. So then um, what else did I wanna show you? Uh, you can set up discounts if you want to. So I do discounts for if they're booking seven days, I might give them a 5% discount. If they're booking for 30 days, typically I discount 30 to 35% from Price Labs and I set up discounts here. You could also set up your rules for holidays. Oh, I thought I had, <clears throat> I thought I had rules set up here, but you can select custom holidays where, you know, you, that they can't, um, they can't book on certain days. Like you don't want someone to check in on Christmas day. Or you don't want someone to check in on new year's day. So you could do that as well. And then for settings, what else? Um, cancellation policies, you can set that up. But I've kind of taught you the most important things at the moment. The one thing that is really great is the legal documents. Let's look at that for a moment. So I have different legal documents. So ALE Solutions, they like their legal document in a certain way with certain things. So I always make sure that I have one specific lease for ALE Solutions. And then I have a specific lease for all other renters. I have a specific lease agreement for a lake property because there are different kinds of risks involved, like jumping off the dock or using kayaks or whatever. So I have a different renter agreement for that. And of course, I talked about different uh, a different rental agreement for travel nurses where I allow them to have more flexible cancellation policy. And so you can set that up so say, for instance, with this one, you have your preset legal agreement here. If you don't like it, you can change any of these things manually. I highlighted the things that are most important for someone to note. Things like rental phones or telephones are not available at this rental property. Do not send your mail here. Get a PO box. Rental insurance. Everyone must have rental insurance. And this lease can extend month to month. So all these different things, okay? And then you can say like, um, I'm only going to apply this lease agreement to this one particular property. Vivian, and can I ask, how do the guests get this? Is it an email link? Is it like an attachment? Yep. Okay. I'll you right now. So uh, let's go to hosting. Let's go to this guy here. This guy, Red Reserved, his name is D. LeBlanc. If I had to go after him, I don't even know where to find him. Uh -huh. Okay. So he stay, he's staying for two nights with three guests. He's got good reviews. That's great. Okay. But what happens when he books? I allowed an instant booking. So what happens next is owner res responds. Okay. I'm an old Austin resident visiting town. Booking gets confirmed. Onerez automatically sends this message. Hi, D, whoever you are. Thanks for booking. Can you take a look at a sec? Uh, click this, the link below. It's going to open a point of contact form with a rental agreement. And every guest has to sign it before coming to our property. And they click this link and it takes them automatically to the rental agreement that you choose. Now, what does that look like on the flip side? So let's look at who D is. So we have D LeBlanc right here. That's his booking number. The legal agreements found here, he signed the legal agreement. 
Okay. He's electronically signed it. And I have his IP address. From what I'm told, that is exercisable in the court of law. So it has all the details of his check-in and check-out time, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The so next for him being, sorry to interrupt, for him being an instant book, he instant booked. So he was in, but then this sent to him to sign. And then what if he didn't sign it? How do you cancel the instant book? Um, so that's, that, that is why I say, and if they complain about it, or they say, I don't have my check-in instructions yet, they can go back to my listing that says specifically that all guests sign a rental agreement. Okay. And will but Airbnb they, back you up with that? That they, will. they didn't sign? They will. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we still don't know who D LeBlanc is, right? And this is the stuff that I'm going to have my video editor blank, blank out, but I've set up so that I make them upload their ID. So you see this as the next step after they sign, it says, okay, now upload your ID. So now I know that D LeBlanc is actually Derek LeBlanc from Texas. Now you know exactly who's staying in your property. For me, this was exactly what I needed for midterm rentals that nobody else was providing. How does he, how do you know, like he signed and, and not and whatnot. So under settings, there's something called templates and something called triggers. Templates is what you're going to say. Triggers is when you're going to say it. Okay, so let's look at my templates. I was kind of going crazy with all these different properties and all these different messages. So I said, you know what? Every time I have an A, one A, or any number, an A, that's going to be a check-in instruction. Anytime it's a B, it's going to be a check-out instruction. Anytime it's a C, it's going to be just a general note about preparing for your trip. Okay, so check-in instructions. Let's look at um, check-in instructions for all properties. Okay, so this is like, hey, it's my pleasure to welcome you. We have you arriving on this date for these nights. So these are all coded. You don't need to know the code. You just have to know where to find the field. And then here's your Wi-Fi information. Here's your Wi-Fi password. We have you on record for this number of adults, this number of children, and this number of pets. This all pulls in from the booking. So you don't have to do anything. Just a reminder, here are your um, rules, your house rules. And you know, in, in case you need it, here's your uh, house manual. And your house manual is already set up in your property master data, okay? So now we know what we're gonna tell them. These are all the check-in instructions. <clears throat> and it's really important to note that there is both an email template and a channel template. Channel means Airbnb. So you have to copy and paste a, sec a second copy to this so that you have one copy for email, one copy for channel. So if we had to look at that same one, it looks a little bit different. You can preview it and it looks like this, okay? Okay, so we said template tells you what you're gonna say. Trigger says when you're gonna send it. So trigger, it says one day before arriving, Say one day before booking has arrived at 8 a.m., I'm going to send them the check-in instructions. So if you click on the change button, you'll say at a scheduled time, one day before they check in at 8 a.m., I'm going to send this template. These are the check-in instructions. However, I'm only going to send it to them if the rental agreement is signed. And I've reserved a security deposit. and only for Airbnb, and then you can choose the property that that applies to. Okay, so there's so many different ways you can control because once you scale or like you're busy, you don't wanna check to see if the guest did this or did that. You set rule sets to say, I'm only giving you check-in instructions if, if these conditions are satisfied. Kira, do you like it? You're not. Yeah. yeah, I only have two properties and I forget to do this. <laughs> like with yeah. you know, did so-and-so pay me? When did they get it to me? Um, yeah, this is going to be awesome for sure. Yeah. So I, I really love this. And then I really want to talk to you guys about integrations. So because we're running out of time soon. I wish 
I did this way sooner. I wish I bought remote locks right from the get-go because I have spent way too much time installing or uninstalling faulty locks or changing codes or losing Wi-Fi connection and blah, blah, all these different things. I wish I went slage encode right from the beginning because now all my properties are in slage code, slage encode, but I could have saved myself a thousand dollars just by doing it right from the beginning. They're $236 on Amazon. And I think you can typically get them in two days. I'm going to show you how they're integrated. Can I just give a pro tip real quick with sludge, sludge and code? If you go yeah. to build.com, like mm -hmm. it's Ferguson build, whatever, mm -hmm. you can order them with the same keypad lock so that you can have one key for all of your properties. Dang. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's amazing. So all my properties have slodge and code and it's the same key. So I only need one key and I don't have what to What if I buy a property later on? You can, so if you go, there's a key code on uh -huh. um, the slodge key. If you look yeah. at your key, there's a, a engraved code on it. That's, That's the amazing. code for the lock. That's amazing. Okay. Sorry, say that again, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you look at your key for the slodging code, like they have the actual physical keyhole, there's uh, an engraved number on it. That's the code for your, the type of lock you have. So if you go to build.com, you can, when you order this slogging code, you put that code in and they'll all be keyed the same. Build, so build.com. Correct. Yep. So when you buy the lock on Amazon, you buy the one that has the keypad on it, you say? It comes with whatever code it is. So like you might have six different keys. Um so for the same property, like, like I have a duplex, so the front door has a slodge and code. I wanted that to match the upstairs, like the actual entrance into her unit, yes. but I would have had to have had two keys if I just ordered yes. them off of Amazon, but I can, uh, I can specifically from build say, give me two that are key to like. Oh, that. that's amazing. That's so good. <laughs> and all I my mean, properties. How would you my yeah. Airbnb, my midterm, my my long term rental, they're all keyed with one key, so I don't have to keep track of like seventeen different keys. That, that is, is that really awesome. a hack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So door locks. Let's talk about how awesome it is. Because I was using another Bluetooth enabled door code, but I and I would use an app called TTL Locks, and then I would change the code for every guest and whatever. Right. At first I was like, well, it's a hundred dollars cheaper than Slage Encode. So let's just do that. And then, you know, the lock would fail or I would, wouldn't have time to go change the code or I have a last minute booking. My worst fear is for someone to check out and someone to still have the key or sorry, someone to check in and the last guest still has the same key code. I was like, you know what, in this business to provide true hospitality, you need to have a custom lock. So I use the door lock integration and I use remote lock. Okay. So under remote lock, you can actually connect it so that, and it's pretty easy to connect. You can go into bookings and then say, for instance, Scott, uh, no, not Scott. Let's see, like, let's go back to D LeBlanc, for instance. It automatically set a door code to 4257, which look, is his phone number, 4257. So because I had it all integrated, as soon as... <clears throat> As soon as everything is booked, it automatically sets the thing. So, and for those of you that like marketing, you now have information for this guest. You have their email, you have their phone number, you have their home address. You can actually do marketing emails to say, hey, um, we'd love to have you back. Hope you enjoyed your stay, blah, blah, blah. So what questions do you guys have that I can answer? What did you say the name was, the integration you use? Uh, remote lock. Remote but you lock. Can, you can use many different ones. Door I've lock. read somewhere that they are able to do this now internally in owner res. Do you know anything? Uh, about so they just, they just did this like in the last week. So you can uh, connect Slage and uh, Slage home directly and it's $4 per lock. Uh, I've been using remote lock here, which I think was $5 a lock. So there is uh, ability to change that. Okay. So there's different ones you can use different, uh, different ways to, to code it, but I use remote lock just cause it was the one that everybody was using. It was really easy to set up and, um, really easy to add more locks.
damage protection. Let's talk about that really quickly. I have mostly enhanced. And, you know, if you think about, you know, um, $500 damage, it costs $13 per reservation. For silver standard, it's 27. I like to choose this uh, $37 one because with midterm rentals is a lot more wear, wear and tear. So I choose $37 um, at $1,500, $1,500 cover damage per booking with a million dollar in host liability and 15K in bed, bed bugs. So um, I looked at Rental Guardian, which this is white labeled for owner res. And I also looked at Wavo. Wavo does not cover bed bugs. In the midterm rental space, I don't think bed bugs are that big of a deal compared to short-term rentals, but you also don't know what kind of space they're coming from. So it's, you know, a little bit of extra money to cover that because mitigation of bed bugs is super expensive and super annoying. Not that I've done it before, but I've heard nightmare stories. Anyone ever dealt with bed bugs here? No? Okay. You guys heard about the horror story in Paris, right? Allegedly, there was a shipment of sheets that came from Austin, Texas. I don't know if that's true or not. So um, what else do we need to talk about? Vivian, quick question on this. Yeah. Do you find, like I have an umbrella or my, you know, short-term rental coverage covers a lot of this of the, like the bed bug and, you know, lost rent, whatever. Are you, have you even tried or ever considered like asking if you could reduce your insurance policy because of having this insurance? You know, I haven't tried, nor have I considered it, but that's a good point. Because I just would be curious if like, because I know insurance is I just keep hearing going crazy high all over the place right now. Actually, um, I had a nightmare about that last night. Yeah. <laughs> so like anywhere I can like not double pay for the same coverage. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if that's even possible, but. Yeah, you might be able to reduce the content that you have, your coverage C, right, Tanisha? Your content coverage. Uh, you might be able to reduce that. Mm -hmm. if you have okay. this protection. Interesting. All right. Thank you. I don't know from your overall policy if it'll make much of a difference though. Right. It probably is very negligible. Right. Okay. It sounds like this is a good option though. If you're co-hosting or hosting other people's properties, mm -hmm. you don't know what kind of insurance they might have, or maybe yeah. you do based on your onboarding policy with them, but it's just like an extra layer. I don't know if I do it for my personal properties, but maybe for other owners. What do you guys yeah. think? So let me show you what happened with Mr. Sibby. Sibby Sebastian booked an Airbnb, six adults, they were roofers. And with Sibby, I was able to collect a security deposit. So let's see here, like they left the place a wreck. So I kept a hundred bucks from a security deposit. I charged him 500 to reserve it. And then I only refunded him 400 bucks. And I sent photos and everything. So that is Onores 101. I think I've showed you quite a bit of stuff. I hope it didn't overwhelm you. I will tell you that if you, here it is. I collect the security deposit of 500 and I kept a hundred bucks because they were um, very messy. Do they require any, I haven't had fortunately knock on wood to do any air covers yet, but like, do you have to submit receipts or proof of damage or anything like how does that process work with getting the security deposit or is it just what you yeah so on airbnb i chose to avoid air cover altogether because i now have i have i hold their money right and i will send photos through the airbnb app and say the reason why i'm keeping a hundred dollar security deposit is because you guys didn't follow the checkout rules you guys washed your dirty boots and left it in the in in the you know, stuff, or maybe you left dog poop. I've unfortunately had to send photos of dog poop before. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that, right? So I think as long as you have enough evidence, I just charge it. Okay. And you do right. it through the, the whatever site they booked through. So there's yeah. a record of it with them as well. Yeah. Okay. But here's the trick. If you collect $500 deposit and they screw up and they don't follow your house rules, they mm -hmm. think you're going to take 500 Mm -hmm, right but if you only take 100 they're like they only took 100 bucks i do that with my long-term rentals all the time yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. It's, it's anchoring right so yeah. oh how does owner res do with private bookings okay so i'll show you that really quickly so right now um with owner res you can create a booking and you can say i want to create a booking for south austin getaway and 
you know, let's say they want to book from November the 10th to December 10th. And then it's, you know, two adults, two children and two pets. So I'm going to create the booking and then I'm going to type in their name. Let's, let's call it, um, Bruno, which is an actual guy that stayed with us. And then we're going to, I'm not, I'm going to save it, but I'm not going to send him any messaging because he's going to be like, what? So I'm going to save. Okay. So now I have him booked for that month. Okay. $28,000. That is short-term rental pricing. Maybe you negotiated pricing with them. Maybe you said uh, for 30 nights, instead of charging you 25,000, I'm going to give you a, a discounted rate and I could do um, discount and do like 50%. I think it's a minus. Uh, you know what? Let's do, oh yeah. You know what? Let's make it easy. Let's just call it 10,000. I don't remember how to do the percentage. Okay. And then the cleaning fee, the pet fee, the damage deposit and credit card fee. So I collect credit card fee back and then I save it. Okay. Then I go into transaction and then I can actually start collecting the money by running their card or I can request a payment from the guest. Or you can even, um, you can schedule the, uh, the payment and say, collect on these dates, you know, in the exact same, the, the exact date of November the 10th or whatever it is. And then you have your rules on how much you're going to take, you know, security deposit. Maybe they're, you're going to lower their security deposit because you have a higher uh, damage deposit. You, you can run your business however you want to, and you can set it up all, all up here. Rental Guardian will cover whatever you've stated in your lease. If you say that you do not allow pets, but pets show up, you better make sure that you get some kind of addendum that says that pets showed up. If you allow it and the dogs make a damage, then you have to make sure you have a copy of that to provide to rental guardian so that they know that they're that you know it, it was in your lease for that. So that's how I take direct bookings. I love direct bookings because Airbnb doesn't take my money. Management fee. So Airbnb charges you 3%. I actually take that 3% back by charging a management fee. I'll show you how that looks like in Airbnb. So you have the details of the booking and you have the booking details and the breakdown management fee. I get that money back from the guest. They don't even see it. They don't even notice it. That's smart. <laughs> you can't see it. It's not, they, they won't see that. It just rolled into the price. I didn't think about that. That's very smart. <laughs> yep. So uh, we're at time. So hopefully you guys got a good experience and overview of how I'm using owner res. Um, I think that it's been really great to, to use and, you know, it is a beast to set up. It really, really, really is. But once you get it set up, it is so much easier to run your business. Can we fill all this out via API reason my VA is Google sheets so I can have them do all this in sheets and then set up an API connection to populate owner res. I don't think so. I think you need to do it directly in owner res, Jamil. Okay, three questions. Can you set up text for non-OTA bookings to go to a cell? Yes. Uh, I don't have it enabled, but there is SMS messaging. You can uh, buy, I think it's Twilio. So I haven't done that yet. I just, I didn't want to be that accessible. Maybe later. <laughs> And then uh, can you set up a logic to hold a security deposit for utility overages? Hmm. So uh, in my leases, gosh. if they go over the utilities, I just put it in there that it's going to be held from the security deposit. And then I only release whatever's left over. I think you need to put it in your rules, in your okay. Airbnb rules and in your lease agreement. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're, if you have it in your renters agreement, that, that works. Okay. What, uh, and then do you suggest paying the extra fee for owner res to set up the platform? I've had good and bad experiences on that. I actually hired a guy to do mine. He taught me how to run my business over four hours uh, because I wanted to, I didn't want just someone to set it up for me and be like, okay, you're on your own. I wanted to learn alongside with him 
So I paid someone to tutor me, essentially. Um, I've heard good and bad things about the staff from Onores, but if you join the Getting Started with Onores, no, not Getting Started, it's called Un Unofficial Onores Facebook Group. Um, I think there's a lady named Debbie there that's supposed to be really good and does a great job of setting people up. Vivian, for I know you have a Hestia website yourself, but with the Onores website, does it I, I'm very branded with mine. Um, it's called Bigfoot's Nook and it's like, you know, it's it's a kitschy kind of theme. Um, but, and this is for short term, not not midterm. <laughs> My midterm is not a kitschy theme. That'd be weird. Um, but um, I want to use the branded name because it's recognizable. So like does owner, you know how Airbnb is like airbnb.com slash H slash Bigfoot's yep. Nook is how does owner res's URL yeah. show. So it's uh pretty easy. You can do the hosted website, which is their website attached to your booking system. Okay. You could also use a WordPress. If you decide to buy some kind of template, you can connect it that way as well. Okay. And then under uh theming, you can do different kinds of logos. Oh, nice. Okay. And then you can also set up, you also want to do verified domains if you've done your DKIM for okay. marketing. So like if I wanted to do, you know, bigfootsnook.com, I'd have to buy a website, do the WordPress login sort yeah. of thing. Okay. Yeah. So okay. this is an example of what it was before corporate rentals, Austin, you know, corporate rentals USA is where you pointed it to. It's currently disabled, but yes, you can just, you know, it's really easy to turn on. You can um, buy your domain and then you can redirect it to wherever you want to. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? before we end the call. I have a quick question. Um, you had mentioned the four or $5 charge for the door locks per door and um, also some other integrations. What other things besides paying for owner res should I kind of be considering that I'll need to be paying for to, to add on, like be, people being able to pay, for example, I don't remember what you called it, but just different things that you have to add to owner res. Um, so you could choose to do QuickBooks if you want to integrate your bookkeeping. I have done that. And I think it is great. Mm -hmm. um, you could also integrate, integrate Stripe or, and may, I think even you can integrate QuickBooks uh, payment processor in there. That way mm -hmm. it's all just in one ecosystem. Uh, I've done remote locks. I've done, let's see what else there is. You can do the, you can integrate the travel insurance, the damage protection. That's pretty much it that I can think okay. of. Yeah. Just following up on that question, um, when the payments come in, I'm assuming you're able to do ACH payments to whatever bank account you want. It's not within owner as like you set up. Um, so when I do, oh, I'll, I'll show you how I record a transaction. There's different ways you can do it. If they pay by Venmo or, or Zelle or whatever, then I will go into and, you know, uh, transactions. I record payments, manual payments. Okay. But if they pay by, um, you know, credit card, for instance, then their transaction will look like this. Okay. And that settles into your, into your Stripe account which then you have to reconcile from your Stripe into your QuickBooks. So if you could do QuickBooks integration right away, that would be amazing. Yeah, Cause I use Stessa for most of my properties. Yeah. Um, so I might have to make a switch to QuickBooks for that. Yeah. I, I need to do a better job. Like I've just, uh, I'm switching a lot of this stuff over right now as well to simplify it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think okay. what's throwing me is I have on my Airbnb account, because I co-host for other people, I actually have onboarded all the owners and all their bank accounts. So basically they get paid for whatever comes through and then I invoice them. Yeah. So I'm curious how this impacts that. If it's integrated with Airbnb, do the payments still go to those particular owners? Oh, so there is a property management module that you'll need to pay for. Okay. It's it's an extra item. So you have to set up your, you know, you'll have to set up your commission details. I don't use this as much. Um, I didn't like it. I, I just found it easier to just keep track of it offline and just send an invoice from my mm -hmm. QuickBooks. 
but you can, you know, record expenses. You can record, you know, different payouts and all that stuff, kind of stuff. So okay, I'll look into that. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. Mel, truthfully, I haven't heard great things from people that actually use it. Yeah. Uh, so you might want to just man manually manage that offline. Okay. That's what I'm doing now. So might have to stick with that for a while. Yeah. Thank y'all. So ugly, but so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the title you should, you should literally say onerous, so ugly, but so amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I should do that for <laughs> sure. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I hope you guys learned how to use Onores and uh, you see some of the exceptional features. It'll be thank you. It's really great for uh, midterm rentals.